Hi, welcome to the series on, of lectures that I'm giving on puppetry and, and the various forms of puppetry that can be found. For this series of lectures, I'm going to be uh, really just beginning with the basics. My hope is to provide an overview of the history and the types of puppetry and then to allow you to delve deeper into uh, whichever uh, area interests you. Uh, so this is really just going to serve as an introduction to puppetry as an art form and some of the basic uh, uh, history and uh, uh, some of the forms of puppetry. Because there's a lot out there that can be dug into in depth that I just don't have time to cover in this, sh in this short series. Uh, I, can, I can only hope that these uh, the images and videos that I'm going to show you and that uh, we're going to link to can spark an interest that will get you out there exploring and learning more about the art form. So with that said, uh, let's begin by looking at the question, what is puppetry? Why is it important and what can it reveal about us? So first, what makes an object into a puppet? Uh, a puppet really is any inanimate object that can be uh, endowed with a life force by a person. Uh, this can have a very broad range from handmade, you know, carved puppets on strings, um, uh, dolls, uh, to found objects. What makes puppets so powerful is the fact that they are really inanimate objects, objects without a life force, objects that are just um, stationary and sitting there, and that they are given life through uh, the manipulation by the puppeteer. Uh, what, this, uh, what this animation can do is to provide a wide variety of effects upon an audience. Uh, I've heard of puppet theater often referred to as object theater or puppets as constructed actors. Uh, I think these phrases kind of start to get at uh, what it is that makes puppetry such a powerful form of theater. Uh, often puppets can be uh, broadly funny, they can be touching, they can be creepy, uh, they, can, they can elicit a, a variety of effects on an audience member um, just through the fact that they are not um, acting but they are actually becoming and being the, uh, the things they, rep they, they really represent in a way that, that live actors cannot. Puppets have been used for, for art theater, for education, for political theater, for satire, um, children's theater, uh, especially beginning in the 19th century. They have performed on streets, in, in uh, legitimate theaters, on carts, on television, on film. The long history of puppetry in so many areas of the world that we're going to talk about uh, speaks to the power inherent in the form that can change and, and modify itself to suit uh, a variety of places, uh, times, and subjects. Puppetry has existed for thousands of years in, a, in a several ways, uh, kind of changing itself. The art form changes itself to match the, um, uh, you know, the surrounding society and, and touch the surrounding society in a way that, that is specific to, that, to puppetry. So throughout this lecture series, we're going to cover a variety of topics. Uh, I'm going to take you through a short history of puppetry uh, in the next lecture, and then we're going to kind of divide up the styles of puppetry uh, and then cover some specific topics beyond that. Um, we're going to look at the, the way things have developed. Um, uh, one thing I want to point out uh, before we get too deeply deep into these lectures is um, I, I debated trying to use um, some video clips, things like that within the lectures, but what I'm going to do is um, and you've probably seen this if, when, when you were gone to download the video. And um, what I'm going to do is, is make, uh, give you a series of annotated links to various videos that have been put out by artists and organizations around, uh, around you know, the U.S., around the world, uh, that give you good examples that we're talking about. Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how they're going to appear on the, the, the page, but they, they should be fairly easy to find. And what I'm going to do is uh, provide these links uh, and include some short notes about uh, what to look for in those videos uh, about why either the puppetry there is good or a bad example of a particular feature of puppetry. That, uh, because really, you can, you can read about puppetry, you can, you can look at pictures, you can you know, watch these lectures, but like theater, puppetry is a, an art of action. And that action must be really seen to be ex you know, and, and experienced to be understood. And so I urge you to, to, to find it and follow these puppetry links to then start getting out. I mean, the internet is just full of really excellent and really horrible 
examples of puppetry. And uh, if nothing else throughout this course, what I want you to do is to, to start to um, really determine for yourself, kind of develop an aesthetic of what what is going to be good and, and bad pu puppetry, uh, or what, what can be good and bad about um, certain um, uh, uh, plays and productions or, or clips or whatnot. Um, and the only way to do that is to start experiencing it. And if you can't get up to the live theater to see it, the next best thing is going to be a lot of these, um, these you know, video presentations behind the scenes and that sort of thing. So look for those um, on the, uh, the iTunes U page. So, and I really want you to think of these lectures then as a supplement to uh, what you can see in these various YouTube videos, promotional behind the scenes videos. Um, so that, that what you're doing is you're experiencing the theater and then you can come here and we can kind of talk about uh, either what it is that you've seen or what will make it uh, help you explore a little more in depth about what it is that you're looking at. Because that is, uh, throughout the course, that is one of the questions I really want to pose and hopefully give you a good foundation to formulate an answer to, and that is what makes good puppetry. Uh, good puppetry has a couple of elements that are common across different, different styles of puppetry, whether it's marionettes, whether it's rod puppets, whether it's um, shadow puppetry, water puppetry. There, there are a ton of styles that look and act completely different. And like all forms of theater throughout this, this form, there are hacks, there are craftsmen, and then there are artists. There are these levels of, of, of skill and artistry that you can find um, you know, throughout the form. Good puppetry can be broad and silly, or it can be extremely subtle. It can be extremely violent or sublime. It can, it can be for adults, or it can be for children. Good and I use that term loosely, but good puppetry can be found in all of those, those areas. Um, so let's look at some of the factors uh, as we get started that, that, that we can kind of judge uh, performance and production on. Uh, first, there's going to be a synthesis of design, writing, and acting. The, the writing and the style of the sketch or the, the play or, the, uh, or whatever it is you're watching is, is going to be appropriate to the style of puppet or performance object. The design of the puppet is going to accurately portray the, the character as it's meant to be seen by the audience. And the puppeteers then have the required skill to breathe life into that object. A lot of puppets that I've seen that are just absolutely gorgeous. But when you pick them up and try to handle them, if you don't have the skills, they stay dead. They stay objects. And, and good puppetry has that design and that acting together that that manipulation of the puppeteer that makes it, that breathes life into this inanimate object and, and affects the audience through that. Um, and in the sense, you're not merely letting the words or the voice uh, in the play tell the story, but you're utilizing the object itself to reveal whatever emotion or action needs to occur to move the, the play along to affect the audience. Um, good puppetry also is going to communicate to the audience and guide them through the willing suspension of disbelief that's, that's at, present in any theater, but is even more so in, in puppetry, because in puppetry, the, the suspension of disbelief is the foundation to, um, to, to moving forward or to building on the, the play from anything else. So, uh, so even more, you really have to help the audience. And again, that's that, that breathing, that life into the puppet that's going to help that happen. Uh, remember, the puppeteer uses the puppet pretty much as a mask. They're always in control of the puppet, but the puppet still needs to have a life of its own. So no matter what the, the style of the puppet, there needs to be a, a good technique. I've seen so much bad technique, it just drives me insane. Um, and that said, I've seen a horrible technique that was still intensely engaging and funny. Um, Unfortunately, there are really no hard and fast rules in art. Um, but the puppeteer needs to have a good understanding of, of both mask work and pantomime. So that even when there are voices or music, the work of the puppet's body is still, uh, still going to be extremely important to that. Um, there are a range of, of styles of puppetry uh, as an art. Like I said, there's, there's uh, good, good and bad puppetry, puppetry is going to exist in a variety of, of environments. Um, Traditionally, some of the traditional areas we've seen puppetry used is, um, are going to be um, as folk art or popular art, you know, used to tell stories is popular 
entertainment. This is you know, street performances or small theaters. You know, that's a tradition that's still alive and well and, and uh, all over the world. But this idea of the, you know, the puppets just coming in to tell the, the either uh, local legends or myths or stories that, that people uh, you know, all over are going to understand. And, 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 and at this point, then, the puppetry, um, the artistry and the design of the puppetry are kind of um, sublimated to the story itself. They're, just, they're really just using the puppet as a tool to tell a story. Um, then puppets have also been used as refined um, art. Uh, you find this especially in you know, modern theater where puppet artists are increasingly trying to fight uh, to get away from the, the children's theater kind of ghetto that they've been relegated to, that they got relegated to, the, the, especially in the 19th century um, as puppets decided, uh, as puppetry tiers decided, especially in the 20s and 30s as they came, came, came of age to really um, uh, puppetry to a level of artistry that they, they felt um, it was being denied. Um, religious uh, stories, puppets uh, were often and still do our way of connecting people to their religious roots. Um, they used to be seen as a way to contact ancestors. Um, similar to masks, there is um, a way to take on the spirit of a god. Oftentimes, uh, puppetry, uh, puppets can be seen as a, as, a, as a house or a temple for the spirit of a god to take over. Again, taking that idea of breathing life into a puppet you know, very seriously, you know, literally taking life and putting it into a puppet. Um, or uh, as an effective way to tell religious stories and myths. Again, taking this, the puppetry back to this idea of storytellers. You know, like all theater, um, it, it exists primarily to tell stories. So um, you can see that as, in, you know, as we said, in popular folk tales or in uh, religious uh, contexts. Um, so that's, that's kind of our introduction to where we're going to be going with uh, this course. Um, we're in the next lecture, what we're going to do is, is cover some of the styles of puppetry and begin a little history lesson, uh, just a very brief synopsis of, of where puppetry uh, came from in the past as it's, as it's moved forward into modern times um, and how it has developed through the ages. So we'll talk about that in the next lecture.